Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and today we're taking a look at the best folding pocket knives that you can get from SOG right now in 2020. Let's check them out. Now, whatever you want to call them, SOG, SOG, Studies and Observations Group, they've been on fire lately. Now, starting last year in earnest, their lineup of dependable but aging designs has seen a nearly complete revamp, and they're in the middle of pulling off one of the most dramatic and quickest turnarounds that I've ever seen in the knife industry. Their lineup of folding knives is now more competitive than ever, and it really started with this knife, the Terminus XR, especially this version, which wasn't the first, but this one has a D2 blade and crimson G10 handles, and it originally sold for just under 50 bucks. Price has gone up just a few bucks now in 2020, but you can also get it with an S35 VN blade and carbon fiber over black G10 for a very reasonable 85 bucks. This knife is perfectly sized for common everyday carry needs. With a blade just under three inches, that D2 steel gives you a good amount of edge retention. And you also get a decent amount of grip and a deep carry pocket clip with the handle. But the core of what makes this knife great though is the locking mechanism, which is their XR lock. It's their take on the crossbar lock genre and it's underpinning the bulk of their new lineup right now. The steel crossbar runs through both sides of the handle so that it's just as accessible for right or left handers. And you can use it to flick open the blade or flick it closed, or you can operate it more deliberately with the thumb studs or the flipper. Now they may be one of the newest companies to use this style of lock, but they aren't just copying the competition. They've truly put their own spin on it. Now the first thing you can see is the flipper tab that I just mentioned a second ago. And while others have done a flipper with their crossbar lock before, I don't really feel like any of them ever really nailed it. Because of the nature of the way that lock works, it can be really tough to get the action right, since all of us are so used to a crisp detent on a flipper these days, but SOG have gotten it right with a nice, satisfying action. It's not as crisp as the best frame lock flippers out there, but it's no slouch either. Now the other thing they've done is they've increased the bias towards closure that this style of lock naturally has. With the lock bar engaging the tang to essentially pull the blade closed when it's near that closed position. Now the added benefit of the geometries that they're employing here is that as soon as you pull back on the lock bar, it pushes the blade open ever so slightly, which essentially gets things started for you as you get ready to flick open the blade by overcoming that bias towards closure. Now the next newly revamped design, the Terminus of course originally was a slip joint, is now the Ultra XR coming in at about 125 right now. This money clip inspired design formerly came with either SOG's arc lock or a frame lock depending on the model you picked, as well as a series of prominent finger grooves on the handle as well. The Ultra XR is sleeker and more ergonomic thanks to the removal of those finger grooves, and it's quicker to deploy too, thanks to that XR lock. Now the carbon fiber handles themselves are very slim, they got no liners whatsoever, and that helps it to lay super flat. Now the broad clip does add a little bit of thickness as it does give you enough room for a handful of bank cards or cash, but it is removable if you want so that you can make this knife super thin in the pocket. Now my favorite part about this knife though is the blade. It's a sub three inch design with a great shape for EDC. It's made from S35 VN steel, so you've got awesome edge retention and it's nice and thin for an excellent slicing characteristic. You've got two distinct looks that you can get thanks to the titanium nitride coating that they use here. I've got gold on this one and that does have a matching clip. You can also get a graphite tie dye if you prefer a more subdued look. Ultimately though, it's not just a great money clip knife, but it's an excellent classy EDC knife or gentleman's knife, especially one that I think even non-knife people would really appreciate having around. Now SOG's tactical models have been getting the revamped treatment with XR locks as well. So check out this Pentagon XR, which features excellent CTS XHP blade steel coming in at 175. Now this new version is a little bit shorter than the old arc lock version, but I think it's a pretty much perfect size with a 3.6 inch blade. That blade features a dagger-like profile with double grinds, but rather than being fully double edged, the spine of the blade is only sharpened out here near the tip. That's gonna help to maximize piercing qualities of the blade, while leaving most of the spine cleaner so that you can choke up on it and get more use out of the blade in non-tactical rolls. And of course, with that XHP steel, the edge is gonna last a good long time as well. And when you combine that edge retention with the efficiency of this essentially thin diamond-shaped cross-section of the blade, it really is gonna be a top performer. Now, the G10 handles are another strong point on this Pentagon XR design. Now, they may look a little bit on the plain side, but that's because they were made with maximum utility in mind. 
but it still offers good retention in the hand too, despite that simple shape. And that's thanks to a decent texture on the G10 and some strategically placed jimping all around. Now that fairly symmetrical profile has no aggressive swoops or curves to it. And for that reason, it's gonna be really hand filling no matter what the size your hands happen to be. And as well as accommodating a variety of different grips, including a reverse grip to cater to many different styles of tactical knife use. There is just one single large finger cutout near the flipper tab, but it's wide enough so that it's not gonna be restrictive and it enhances the safety of the flipper tab too, which forms a nice finger guard here. That's gonna keep your grip from slipping forward, which is something the old versions of this folder lacked entirely. Now you can get this knife in an all black configuration so that the reflections are minimized or with this OD green handle if you want a little more variety. Now an even more dramatic transformation took place in their professional line with this new SOGTAC XR which is the first SOGTAC model that is not an automatic knife. Now they've taken the upswept blade version from the original and paired it with this new handle shape here. Much like the Ultra XR from earlier, they've ditched the finger grooves that used to come on this knife so you get a more ergonomic grip to the G10 handle with both black and OD options available again. They've also given that handle a little bit of negative angle. It's not quite a pistol grip, but it is moving in that direction a little bit. What that's gonna do is help point the tip more intuitively if you hold this knife outstretched in the hand. This one is more affordable than the Pentagon XR and that's down to the use of D2 blade steel rather than XHP. And the coating here does more than just keep the reflections down. It's also gonna offer some corrosion protection on that semi stainless tool steel. The blade shape is probably even more versatile though. Now for me having no combat training to speak of, I find this shape highly attractive for everyday carry. You've got a nice full flat grind, thin enough blade stock, and a full sweeping belly all coming together to grant this knife excellent slicing capabilities, and the 3.4 inch blade is just a great size. Also, if you do like partial serrations, you can get that with this knife, and you couldn't do that with the Pentagon. Now being in the tactical line though, rather than offering a full deep carry clip like some of their EDC models, they've mounted a clip a little bit higher on the handle. Because of that, the knife is gonna be a little bit easier to access from the pocket, especially for operators who may be wearing duty gloves. Now, one of the things that SOG has always been known for, at least for a long time, is assisted opening knives. And now with the transition to the XR lock, they haven't abandoned that space, but instead they've actually incorporated their spring assisted action into the new crossbar lock. These models have the suffix AT rather than XR. And since we've been looking at tactical models so far, let's keep that going with the new Trident AT coming in at the $95 mark. Now the assist mechanism is integrated seamlessly. The only outward difference that you're gonna see is the spine mounted safety that can lock the blade in the closed position to keep it from opening accidentally. I'm really glad that they mounted it from this space because it doesn't ruin the ambidextrous capability and it also doesn't get in the way when you're gripping the knife. Now, if you aren't a fan of safeties, you could always leave it disengaged if you want, and I honestly wouldn't worry about it firing. All the ones that I've handled have required a pretty deliberate push on the thumb studs before that spring action takes over, and that spring action takes over quite nicely. And we've got a pair of different D2 blade shapes that can be had right now, and with these two, you can actually see the two colors that are available right now. But for one, we've got a nice sweeping clip point shape with a high flat grind, and it manages to emulate the shape of SOG's famous seal fixed blades, as well as a new Tonto shape that I'm a big fan of. Now, normally I gravitate away from Tonto shapes as they aren't really what I look for in my EDC, but the leading edge on this one is curved enough that it has me actually really wanting to carry one. With a blade length of nearly three and three quarters of an inch, it's got enough reach to do just about any job a folder should be doing. And we've got handles here that are made from glass reinforced nylon. And they've got a good orange peel texture on them to add some grip. Now, interestingly, even though this still is one of their more tactical designs, the pocket clip is mounted further back near the, uh, right near the end of the handle instead. Now, speaking of that handle, of course, the most identifiable thing about it is the signature cutout here, which has always been a hallmark of the Trident series since the beginning. Now this leaves the edge of the blade itself exposed so that this knife can act as a strap cutter when it's in that closed position. And then you can actually grip the knife nice and hard without having to worry about coming into contact with that edge. And when you do that, you can take advantage of that nice glass breaker there on the leading edge of the handle itself. All right, let's move a little bit away from the tactical stuff and take a look at one of their longtime EDC staples, the Aegis, now in AT form, ringing up at the $85 price point. And while previous versions of this knife had some crossover into the tactical realm, the new AT versions really lean into bridging the gap between EDC and the outdoor arenas, especially with this Knife Center exclusive orange version, but there are some other colors available too, of course. 
We've got black coated and cryo treated D2 steel here again, about three and one eighths of an inch long, and much like the SOGTAC, the full flat grind and appropriately thin blade stock make for efficient slicing. The GRN handles are my favorite part of this design though. They're long enough to offer a full grip, even for larger hands, and they're surprisingly comfortable. There's pretty much no folder out there can ever match the comfort of a well-contoured fixed blade, of course, but the Aegis AT is not a bad choice for long cutting sessions if you are going with the folder route. Even that lanyard loop at the end of the handle is no problem either. Even if your hands are large enough to make contact with it, it's not uncomfortable when you're gripping. Now, since this knife is more targeted towards EDC than tactical, this knife does transition to a more traditional deep carry pocket clip, which is of course reversible like all these knives so far have been. Again, that ambidextrous usability is much appreciated. But you can take this knife with you every day and then head right out into the woods, take it hunting, camping, hiking, you name it. This is gonna cover pretty much every base you're gonna need. Next up is one of the cornerstones of SOG's EDC repertoire, the new Flash AT at the $75 mark. Now this one looks the least like the original model of any of the revamps that we've looked at so far, but the Flash AT offers their new vision on what an essential everyday carry knife should be, which is what the Flash has always been about. It's got pretty much the same bullet points as the Aegis, just in a different shape overall. D2 steel coated, although gray in this case, GRN with various colors, this one is the urban gray option, and an assisted opening XR lock mechanism with spine mounted safety. The blade shape here is great, almost three and a half inches long, drop point, thin and slicey with a high flat grind, but it still does maintain some full thickness close to the spine for a little bit more lateral strength. Now the handle here has plenty of length as well, and it only has just a single finger groove, so it is gonna accommodate a wide variety of hands as well. Although the Pentagon from earlier probably still has the edge here just by a little bit. Being their EDC Magnum Opus, this knife features a full deep carry clip mounted from the tail end of the handle. And combined with that handle shape that isn't super wide, this knife is gonna carry nice and deep in the pocket without taking up too much room. All right, last but not least is their flagship XR model, an all new design, the Seal XR Flipper. Now, unfortunately, I don't have one in front of me, so we're gonna have to use some older footage, but this is the big bad design that rules the folder roost at the moment. And it's essentially a folding interpretation of their Seal fixed blades, which are probably their most recognizable product. You can see it in the lines of the blade and the shape of the handle, which brings over the subtle finger grooves from the fixed blade version. Now the four inch blade is made with S35 VN and it's ready for hard work or tactical needs. And the GRN handles have a lot of grip thanks to the texture and continuous jimping all around. It's perfect for heavy use when wearing gloves. And finally, at the end of the handle is a protruding piece of metal that they're calling a persuader, which can be a great impact tool for getting stubborn things to move. Now, if there's any single knife in their new lineup that's a statement of the new path that SOG is following, this is definitely it. All right, folks, that's all I've got to show you today for my top list of the best SOG knives, at least for right now in 2020, or at least they're my favorites right now in 2020. Make sure to let us know in the comments which ones you liked, which ones are your favorites from SOG's lineup, or even if they have another older model that you want to see them reimagine. In the meantime, if you want to get your hands on any of these knives or browse entirety of SOG's collection, there, I said it, SOG's collection, we'll leave a link in the description below for all of that. And while you're over there at the Knife Center, make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program, because if you're going to buy one of these cool knives, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.